What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with quadratic equations. So an open top box is to be made from a rectangular sheet measuring 80 centimeters by 60 centimeters by cutting squares in each corner and then folding it up. And we have to find the volume of that box in these two different scenarios. If the base area is 3,381 centimeters squared, and then the total surface area is 4,400 centimeters squared. So these are gonna be two different boxes over here. Now, the way this works, if you've never run into a question like this before, is we're gonna be taking a rectangular sheet like this. We're gonna be cutting squares in each corner. So we would cut these squares out. And so what would happen after is we'd end up with, um, let me just draw it fully first, and then I'll just erase these sides. So what we would end up with then is that these squares here are gonna be cut from each corner like that, right? After we cut the squares, we end up with something like this. And then what we're gonna do is each of these parts here, right here, this, 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 and that, we're gonna fold those up in order to get that box. And so what ends up happening is we end up with um, a 3D box like this after we, uh, we fold these parts up, right? After cutting out the squares. So this is what we're gonna end up with, right? So what's happening is initially, we have this rectangular sheet which measures in this particular case 80 centimeters by 60 centimeters. So this entire length here is 80, this entire width here is 60. And then we're gonna be cutting out the squares from each corner. Now we don't know what the length of the squares are so what we can do, we can introduce a variable here and I'm gonna let x equal the width or the length of the squares that we are cutting out. And so if we bring that variable here, notice that this square, it's gonna be x and x, this one's gonna be x and x, this is x, 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 like that. Okay, and then we're gonna cut those out. And so we end up with this over here after we cut those squares out. And so notice here, if you could visualize this, if we're gonna fold these sides up, well then notice that this base that we get with the resulting box here, that's gonna be the same as this base right there. You see that, right? If we fold these up, then this base is gonna be the same as that base. And what we could do is we can actually come up with expressions for the length of this base and the width of this base. It's not gonna be 80 by 60 because 80 by 60 was the original rectangular sheet. And then what's happening is we are cutting out these squares here. And so starting with this length, notice that this length is gonna be the same as this dotted line right here, right? Both of those are the same thing. And so notice that if this entire thing, this entire length is 80 right there, well, notice that then we're cutting out this length of x, and then we're cutting out this length of x, right? So this dotted line would be this resulting length right here. And so notice that if the entire thing is 80, let's maybe take the 80 out of there, the entire thing from here to here is 80, and then this is x and this is x, well, notice that this resulting length is gonna be 80 minus 2x. Okay, because the total was 80, and then we took out an x, we took out another x, so we took out two x's, and so this resulting length here, the dotted line, is gonna be 80 minus those two x's that we took out. And then the same thing for the width here, right? This width is going to be, well, notice the entire thing is 60. Well, if we cut out this x, we cut out this x, what's this remaining dotted line gonna be? That's gonna be the same as this. It's gonna be 60 minus 2x, like that. So that's gonna be the length of the base. That's gonna be the width of the base. So we can actually label that over here. We'll have 80 minus 2x, 
then over here we'll have 60 minus 2x for the width of the base. And then notice that this length, right, is x, this length is x, that's the same as these squares over here, and we're going to be folding those up. And so if you think about it, when we fold it up, the height of this box is going to be x, right? Because the height is basically going to be this. When we fold this up, this or this is going to be the height of that box now, which is just a length of x that we labeled before, which is the length of each of these squares over here, right? So we're taking this rectangular sheet, cutting out the squares, and, we, and, and then we fold the remaining sides, and we end up with this rectangular box over here, right? And those are going to be the dimensions of that rectangular box. Remember that this is an open top box, so there is no face right there. The only material, quote unquote, is on the bottom part, the bottom base, and then the sides, the the face is on the side of the box, but the top face is going to have no material. It's going to be an open top box. Okay, so now that we have those dimensions here, we can go into finding uh, what we're looking for. Because in part A, we're told the base area is 3,381 centimeters squared, meaning that this base area right here, if I draw it in, right, is going to be this amount. Well, we know what the length, notice that that's a rectangle on the base. We know the length is 80 minus 2x, and we know the width is 60 minus 2x, and we know that that area has to equal 3,381, like that, right? Length times width gives us the area of a rectangle. And so now notice we just have an equation to solve. And so if we uh, expand everything, we would have 4,800 minus 160x minus 120x plus 4x squared equals 3,381 like that. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring everything over to the left side. So we'd have the 4x squared. These are like terms, right? So those would end up being minus 280x. And then the 4,800, when we bring this 3,381 over, it becomes a minus the difference between those would be um, positive 1,419, like that. And then that is going to equal zero. Okay, and then from here, because we're dealing with fairly large numbers, I recommend throwing this into the quadratic formula. So we'll have negative b, so that will be negative, negative 280 plus or minus b squared, the square root of b squared minus 4 times the a value of 4 times the c value of 1419. And that's going to be all over 2 times that a value of 4, like that. And then when you do all the algebra for the quadratic formula, you would end up with this under the square root. Then the square root of that is actually going to be a smooth number, positive, plus or minus 236. And then we would get two different values because of this plus or minus here. So the two answers would be 64.5 and 5.5. Now, what are those? Remember, that's the x value, which is the length of the square. So I'm going to write out these solutions here. So we got 64.5, and then we also have 5.5. Now, what we got to do, we got to make sure that these make sense according to the word problem. They are the solutions for this abstract equation over here, okay, but they may not necessarily make sense according to our problem. So notice that that first solution of 64.5, that actually doesn't make sense because we can have maybe a height of 64.5, which is just the x value, but notice that these two sides would be 60 minus 2x, and if we plug in 64.5 either into the 60 minus 2x or the 80 minus 2x, notice that we would get negative values here, okay? And we can't get negative values because we can't have a negative side. That doesn't make sense. And so this solution is actually inadmissible like that. Now, what about this 5.5? Well, notice the 5.5 would work 
because we would have the height, let's actually just say the height would be the 5.5, and we're working with centimeters, right? That's gonna be this. What's the width gonna be? Well, it's gonna be 60 minus two times 5.5, which is gonna be 60 minus 11, which would give us 49 centimeters. So that's going to be the width right there. And then the length is going to be 80 minus 2 times 5.5, which is going to be 80 minus 11, which would give us 69 centimeters. That's going to be the length right here. Okay, this is if x is 5.5. What are they asking for though? They're asking for the volume. Now what's the volume of a rectangular prism? It's just equal to length times width times the height. And so the length, 69 centimeters, the width, 49 centimeters, and then the height is five and a half centimeters like that. And when you multiply all of those out, we would end up with a volume like this right there. Okay, so that's the volume for the scenario in part A. If the base area, this base area that I shaded in, is equal to 3,381 centimeters squared. That's gonna be the volume of the box right there. Okay, so lots going on here. This is a fairly complex uh, question. The algebra, I know you know how to do the algebra at this point because we have all the tools, whether with factoring, whether with the quadratic formula, but setting it up and just understanding how everything fits together, that's the tricky part. And then part B is actually going to be more tricky, in my opinion, than part A. I feel like I'm going to need more room for this one. So I'm going to put the surface area here is 4,400 centimeters squared. So the reason why this one's going to be trickier is there's going to be more algebra because now we're working with the entire surface area. We're not just working with the area of the base, right? So this surface area is gonna include the area of five different faces. Remember, it's an open top box, that's another trick. So we wouldn't include this top face right here, right? There's not gonna be any material on that. So this surface area wouldn't include that top face, but the bottom face and then the other four faces, all of those areas have to add up to this. So it's gonna be a fairly large equation. So what we're gonna do is first, the base area, which we know is 60 minus 2x times 80 minus 2x, like that. And now let's get the area of this side face over here. Notice that that, that's the length of that face, 60 minus 2x, that's the width of this face right there. Okay, and notice that there's two of them. This face and then this face on the other side, both of those are the same. They're gonna have the same area. There's two of them, so we could actually take two of those and the area for each of them is gonna be x times 60 minus 2x, like that. Okay, and then what would happen is we have two more faces remaining. So we got this base, we got two of those faces on the side, right? That was represented here. And then we have this front face. This front face, and then this back face. And both of those have the same area as well. Both of them are gonna have an area of 80 minus 2x times x, like that, right? This rectangle over here, it's gonna have an area of 80 minus 2x times x, and there's two of them, one in front, one in the back. So let me put plus two of them, x times 80 minus 2x. And the total of all of those Sum together is gonna to give us that total surface area of 4,400. Okay, so we're still solving for the x value, which is gonna be the height, which is the same as the length of the squares that we cut out. It's just gonna be a lot more algebra. And so if we do all of this expanding, let me actually start it here, just because there's gonna be a lot. So uh, we know that this, we already expanded this, these two brackets in part A, it was 4,800 um, minus what, 280x plus 4x squared, like that. Now we gotta expand these, so these combine to 2x, when we distribute the 2x, we'll have 120x uh, minus 4x squared, like that. Then distributing this and that, 
we would end up with 160x, and then we have minus 4x squared, like that, right? These are like, I could combine these just so you see it clearly, 2x, okay? Over here, 2x, and again, we're taking that 2x, we're distributing it in both brackets. So 2x times 80, 160x, 2x times negative 2x is negative 4x squared. And all of that's gonna be 4,400 like that. Okay, so we've got this giant equation here. And so now notice that there's a lot of things that cancel out on this left side here. Notice the negative 280x plus 120x plus 160x, those would cancel out. And then notice a 4x squared minus 4x squared cancels out. And so what we're left with on the left side is this 4,800 minus the 4x squared. And then we still have the 4,400 on the other side. And now to solve for this x, notice that there's only one term with this x, so we could actually solve for it directly. Okay, we don't have to make it a quadratic equation. I will do that as well to show you in case your teacher requires it. But if you wanna solve for it directly, you could bring the negative 4x squared over, which would be positive 4x squared. You could bring the 4,400 over. 4,800 minus 4,400 would give us 400. And we could divide both sides by four, so we end up with 100 equaling x squared. So x would be the square root of 100, which would give us 10. It's actually plus or minus 10, but the negative we're gonna ignore because we can't have a negative height. So that ends up being the final answer right there. Now, if you were to do this with factoring, if you wanted to show it a little bit more properly, you could bring everything over and you'd end up with uh, zero equaling four x squared minus 400, right? Because when you bring the 4,800 over, it'll be 4,400 minus 4,800. And then you could factor out a four. You'd be left with that. And then x squared minus 100, that's actually a difference of squares, like that. Okay, and so you would get those same solutions, x equals 10, x equals negative 10, then negative 10 you would just ignore and you would just use positive 10. So because we only have one term with an x, right? There's no other uh, bx term in the uh, quadratic. So we don't have to use quadratic formula or anything crazy like that. We could just directly solve for the x and it actually ends up being a nice number 10. So again, we're not done yet because we just got the x value, which is the height. So, okay, the height of this is going to be 10. What's the width going to be? It's going to be 60 minus 2 times 10, which is 60 minus 20, which would give us 40. And then what's the length going to be? 80 minus 2 times 10, 80 minus 20 would give us 60, like that. So the volume would be length times width times height, 60 centimeters times 40 centimeters times 10 centimeters, which would give us what, 20 4,000 centimeters cubed, like that. That's what the volume would be, All right? So just be on the lookout for these kinds of questions. It's a fairly intense type of question. Usually this is a question that comes from higher grades, but if you are taking a rectangular sheet, folding it up to make a box, this is how you do it. You just gotta get the expressions for the different dimensions and then just work with whatever scenarios you're given.